there are a lot of great podcasts out there. And one of the things that I've been doing is recommending a podcast at the end of each episode. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end because I guarantee you the podcast I recommend you're going to love. Well, in this episode of Conversations with Rich Bennett, I am honored to have on a brother, another Marine. He's an entrepreneur and serves as CEO and founder of Success Champions and Success Champion Networking. He's considered one of the leading global minds on sales, business development, and business growth. He's also described as the first person to make sales and business development relatable and human. He's a community builder at heart. He builds champions. And today he helps small business owners leverage sales and business development to grow, then scale their business through the global brand Success Champion Network, which is part of the Success Champion family of companies, which include Badass Business Summit and Champions Table Masterminds. In addition to running multiple business, he runs a full working farm with goats, chickens, ducks, turkeys, and geese. And his podcast, Growth Mode, ranks among the top podcasts globally. He's a five-time best-selling author and a highly sought-after public speaker. It's an honor to have on this episode, Donnie Bovine. Coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios, Harford County Living presents Conversations with Rich Bennett. Come on, you're faster guys. than me. Guys, hey, yeah. we We've been together. I Oh man, you already said it. I was gonna ask her. She remembered the date. Sitting here today with a, I guess you could say a brother because we both served in the Marine Corps. Um, so obviously a Marine Corps veteran, a podcaster, an entrepreneur, an author, a speaker. Good Lord, am I missing anything? <laughs> <laughs> CEO, three companies, uh, farmer, uh, five best-selling books, um, and a partridge in a pear tree. Man, there you go. We have, <laughs> I have Donnie Bovine on. And first of all, Semper Fi, brother, it's good to Semper have you. Semper Fi and freaking kudos. I didn't ask. Can I cuss on your show? I didn't even ask. That's all right. I got that doot sound I could put in there. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, um, uh, but kudos for pronouncing my last name right. That very rarely happens. Really? Yeah. So, it's not, so good it's on not you. Not that hard. I mean, I, I, that dare, but I, you know what? Yeah, it's weird because some people. I mean, I've come across some names, and I'll have to ask them first. But no, I, yours because I've listened to your podcast. Ah, thanks, dude. That's awesome. That's so awesome. that's it. Yeah, I mean, got to do your research. I've never met so many... a Santa Claus who's a Marine, though. So this is the first for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you delivering guns and ammo under the tree? I mean, what are we doing here? <laughs> I, I, I wish at times, you know. <laughs> now I actually fell into this by accident. Well, I don't want to say by accident. My brother used to do it, and then he had broke his hip and couldn't do it anymore. So somehow or another got handed down to me that's awesome and i've always told him look i'll grow the beard but as far as the belly goes forget it i ain't doing that that's what pillows are for yeah that's what i do although <laughs> although last year i gotta admit i put on i think 20 pounds and yeah because the kids they keep bringing santa cookies and let me tell you man them chocolate covered oreos they are good and you can't say no are you going down the chimney or you're just kicking in the back door Ma'am, I'll get stuck if I try to get <laughs> so, so first of all, okay, your time in the Marine Corps, because you yep. did uh, what, four years active, yeah, right? Four Two years inactive. Um, yep. So uh, I take it San Diego. No, for, well, I went to San Diego for boot, yeah. Right. Okay, yeah, and MCRB. what was your MOS? 35, 21, 22. So I was a motor team mechanic. Okay. Um, I was the second stage mechanic, so I was actually a rebuild mechanic. But I tell everybody, you know, I was a government trained mechanic, which means I don't know shit about turning wrenches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I still, I mean, I probably could change my own oil, but why? Um, <laughs> exactly. Other people need to make an income, so I'm gladly help to help them, you know, do that. Well, no, yeah, that. These cars nowadays, God, you have to trying to find how to change your oil oh, is ridiculous Even it's the covered in so stuff? much crap and everything else so. oh yeah 
So you did four years there, and then after, all right, I, I take it you decided four years was enough and you were going to Oh, out. dude, uh, I, I'll explain it this way. I got out as an E4. Now, traditionally, right. when somebody gets out as a corporal, there's a whole ceremony and they pin on the stripes. Yeah. A staff sergeant walked up to me, said, I don't know how the hell it happened, how this happened, but you're now a corporal, handing me my chevrons and walked off. That was my promotion. Are ceremony. you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I wow. wasn't the greatest Marine out there. I wasn't a complete shitbird, but, you know, I definitely was not your, your picture perfect Marine. Right. I never got NJP'd. I never got in that kind of trouble. I had a mouth on me, and that's what got me in a lot of trouble. But, um, yeah, all the, the rest of my buddies and everything found out about it. They pinned on my chevrons and my blood stripe. <laughs> yeah. So, so but that'll, that'll sum up my four years really easy. Did they pin them on the traditional way? Oh, my blood? God. I couldn't freaking hardly walk the next okay, day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just wanted to make sure. And, and and when there's blood running down your chest because they're actually pinning on your chevrons, yeah. and then you're dead legging the hell out of you walking the gauntlet. I mean, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that was for... three months before I got out. So now I was a corporal to all my buddies. <laughs> I never got transferred, <laughs> you know, so. Wow. For those of you listening, if you don't know what it means to get your chevrons pinned on, first of all, your chevrons are your stripes, but in our our camos, our camouflage uniform, they're put on the collars and they have pins on them. And they would, when you got pinned, I mean, they would punch well, yeah, them on they there. They take the backs off. You know, if you think yes. about a little button that goes on your shirt that has that little thing on the back, imagine taking that off and there's two posts with spikes on them getting slammed right in your damn collarbone. <laughs> hey, did they do the same thing to you when you went to the rifle range if you got rifle expert? Uh, I shot pistol and rifle expert. Actually, it was the pistol coach, but I don't remember any... They didn't pin them on you? Uh-uh. Now, I will tell you that there I was, was a sucker then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously. Uh, I will tell you that there was a, a an old uh, news episode that came out about pinning on the jump wings, you know, when people got their jump yes. wings. And, like, Dateline does this whole thing. On, I was in the Marine Corps when this happens, right? So we're a bunch of dumb, drunk yardheads going, <laughs> those guys are crying, they're wusses. Uh -huh. We then did take out our shooting badges because that's all we could find. Drunk is all get out. Pull the backs off, and we're walking through the parade just beating the crap out of putting the pins, you know, bleeding all down our chest like we're real men. We wake up the next morning, and we're all just black and blue and oh, just tore man. up like a bunch of damn idiots. Well, honey, what do you expect? My father always <laughs> said, you know, the, the Marine Corps brainwashes us. and For sure. I think they did, so. For sure. For so sure. when you when you got out, I mean, what were what was your intentions? What did you want to do? When you got out, you know what? I, I will tell you, I went in the Marine Corps one because my older brother went in, mm -hmm. and uh, I was doing a lot of dumb things. I don't know how much trouble I would ultimately have gotten into. My right. parents said I'd likely would have ended up in prison or something just because I was doing some stupid things, but I don't know if I would have ever gotten that bad. But I didn't know what the hell I wanted to be up for. I went in, I didn't know what the hell I wanted to be once I got out. So, luckily for me, my best friend and his old man. Uh, ran a heating and air conditioning company. So I okay. walked straight into a job. Oh, nice. Uh, um, so I never had the hard transition like a lot of guys, you know, that I served with did. Right. So, um, but I started off as a grunt, you know, in heating and air conditioning in Texas. So I was a jackass that climbed up in the attics and under the houses, Ugh. all the nasty, dirty work. And I was getting ready to quit. And uh, as I... I got out of the truck that day I was going to quit. I'm walking up and Jerry, the owner, looks at me and goes, ooh, that's the I'm going to quit face. I'm like, you damn right. I'm done with this stuff. <laughs> and he's like, hold on before you quit. Let me try something. I'm like, Jerry, I'm out, man. I'm not going up anymore. Addicts are in the house. As I said, I'm just not, that's not, not built for that. He goes, hold on. He goes, tomorrow I want you to show up in a polo, nice pair of blue jeans, you know, and, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand you a stack of brochures and I'm going to drop you in a neighborhood and you're going to go door to door and see if people let us come look at their systems. I said, I'm in. He goes, now hold on. I'm not paying you anything unless we actually do some work on the house. I said, I don't care. I don't Straight have to climb condition. in. Yeah, I don't care. I'm like, I don't have to climb in the attics. I don't have to climb under the houses. I'm in. So uh, that's how I got into sales was Jerry would literally, he'd drop a case of water behind a bush and go, okay, there's your water for the day. 
really? you know, some random person's house and he'd wow. drop me in a neighborhood and say, go. And hell, probably for two weeks, I didn't get a single person to talk to me. Which can so, be frustrating. Yeah. And so I'm like, crap. Um, it was two or three weeks in that Jerry forgot the case of water. So now I'm in the middle of Texas, 110 degree freaking weather, no water knocking on houses. So it gets close to noon and I'm dying of thirst. So yeah. I knock in his house, lady opens it, she goes to slam it. I'm like, ma'am, I'm so sorry. Would you do me a favor? I said, I just need a glass of water. I said, and I was explaining to her, I'm like, I don't have any water out here. I don't have a vehicle, you know? And she's like, oh my God, come on in, honey. Sit down at her table, because I'm obviously sweating my ass off. Right. And she hands me a glass of water, and I start drinking. She goes, all right, well, you're in my house. You might as well tell me what you're doing. And I'm like, I honestly have no idea. <laughs> she goes, what do you mean you have no idea? And I walk her through. I'm like, Jerry drops me off, and I'm supposed to get people to come look at the systems. And if we look at it and do any work, I'm going to get paid. She goes, oh, he just needs to come look at the system? I'm like, yeah. She's like, call him up. I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, call him up. I'm like, Okay. So Jerry gets on the phone. I'm like, Jerry, you're not going to believe this. He's like, what? She's I'm like, she actually wants you to come look at the system. She starts laughing. Jerry's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so but... Jerry comes and we do like this little $135, just a quick maintenance job, nothing big. And I made like five bucks on it. Right. I can promise you for the rest of the summer, I had to pee like crazy because every house I went to, I'm like, I forgot my water. Can I just get a glass of water? And that's how wow. I learned to go door to door. So that was your first sales job? Yeah. And yeah. He ne- but you, he never gave you any sales training? No. He did, Jerry didn't know how to sell. Oh, jeez. Right? You know, uh, Jerry, Jerry hooked up with his home maintenance thing. And, you know, so we were doing all these home maintenance contracts. And that's where a lot of the work came from. But Right. Um, you know, n- nobody had ever taught him how to sell. He got most of his business from sitting in the local bar smoking his stogies. Wow. Right? And so uh, now uh, I'm out there doing the sales and things for him and figuring out. But, yeah, I, I never got any sales books, no sales coaching, no sales training. This this sums up my entire sales career, by the way. Right. Um, you know, I never was sales trained, ever. Um, really? Nobody ever taught me anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I spent 20 years in sales. Um, wow. And the, the fascinating thing is I developed kind of my own processes and own systems. And I actually took us into commercial and we went from a residential to a commercial company and we grew to from about a $300,000 company to a $3 million company. Whoa. All on the back of me going out and figuring out how to sell. And that's how I got recruited up to St. Louis was I was selling and I uh, closed a deal on a uh, small pharmacy and the district manager for this pharmacy happened to be there and goes, how the hell did your three person company get this job? And I said, I showed up and said, hi. (laughs) 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 And He's like, you got to be kidding me. Um, And so they recruited me up to do franchise, be part of a franchise sales team up there in St. Louis. Yeah. It's one of the things that I was, taught when i first got into the car business selling cars and they said that when people first get into the car business that's when they're the best if they've never sold anything before then they train you then things start going down (laughs) because and i I fully agree with that you know um because i tried to read a couple of sales books and Mm -hmm. they ruined me yeah you know i lost everybody's different yeah with that and and you know, for me, sales is a conversation. Exactly. It's not a tactic. You know, it's not a process or a system. It's a conversation. And and when you can wrap your head around that, you're really looking to build these lifelong relationships and not mm-hmm. just try and get transactions done. You know, a lot of good things happen. Yeah, and I think that's where a lot of salespeople mess up. At least I know in the past and ones I've used to work with, they're so busy worrying about closing the sale and they they're they're not starting a conversation. They they think you can go in right away and close the sale. Yeah. And it can't be. You got to build that relationship, especially uh, and, nowadays. And I won't say it's all on the the sales guys. I mean, they're under a, a tremendous amount of pressure because Well, yeah. You know, you got these companies setting unrealistic quotas and then when guys hit that quota, you know, they're like, "Okay, now it's 200% higher next year, yeah. you know, and they're beating the crap out of these guys, you know, to force them to sell. And, you know, 
truthfully, not many people in this world, hardly anybody actually has a sales problem. Because sales yeah. is that final conversation when you get to a yes, no, right? Mm -hmm. And if, in this day and age, if you try and close a sale, you're going to lose. There's, there, you need to get closure, which is a yes, no, or a next step in every conversation. Right. But if you try and do some tactic to close a deal, you're going to lose. So most people, if you set them across from the right person and they have the right conversation at the right time, good things happen, right? Most people can get the deal done at that moment, Right. So it's not that people have a sales problem. They have a business development problem, which is yes. all the things that gets them to that sale because that's where the real work is. Your top salespeople in the world are really just mediocre salespeople mm -hmm. that are really damn good at business development. <laughs> and they know how to get into the conversations. And they build a process way for themselves to get into as many of the right conversations and right rooms as they possibly can. The other thing is, too, those people also know how to keep that conversation going for a long time so that it's not just one sale. It's continuous. Correct. And you need that, that loyalty there. Not, I'm, I'm not just from the customer, but even as a salesperson yourself, you need to be loyal. And 100%. That's what's, going to, that's what's going to keep you busy. And that's what frustrates me about most people that are out there teaching sales is they come from transactional industries. They mm -hmm. come from car sales. They come from insurance sales. And they come from all these sales that it's a one-time close. Yeah. And and then there's you know years or something goes by before a person may come back to you. And very rarely does a person go back and buy from the same car salesman, right? Exactly. You know, So they're out there teaching all these tactics. Well, I promise you. If you try half the crap they're teaching, you're going to destroy your image and brand in the marketplace. And if you try that crap in B2B sales, you're, you're going gonna to get work. run the hell off quick as hell. Yep, it's not going to work. Yeah. And I, I, that's one of the things I, you know, I learned in the past is because uh, I went from you know, customer sales doing car sales to business to business when I was in radio and then copiers and computers and now, and now with my business, and in all honesty, I like the business to business better because that relationship lasts longer. Yeah, for sure. And when it comes to, and I'm different from, at least I know from other businesses around here. When my, when my, I don't want to say customers. When my partners um, renew, you know, for another year, I always give them something extra. They're being loyal to me. I'm going to be loyal to them. Love and that. yeah, Love you, you have to. So yeah. it, it's just, but you're right. I, I think there's too many salespeople out there that they're trained one particular way. They, they, they're they following all these other steps and it's, well, how, look, car sales. Look how many people, car salesmen jump from dealer to dealer to dealer. <laughs> Well, I mean, you and that training is different between dealerships, right? <laughs> well, and then that, then you know, a lot of these young kids who find themselves in sales, there's not a whole lot of choices. I mean, you go sell cars, yeah. you sell insurance, you sell financial advisory services, and why the hell a twenty-something has any business doing anything in the financial advisory space? <laughs> you know, um, shit. I'm almost I'm 45 years old and still trying to figure out money, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, it, it changes all the time. It seems sure. like lately, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, so you, you, you've got these industries and the kids that would probably be amazing freaking salespeople out there are taught these horrible practices because most of those type of companies, they don't need these kids to stick. They need right. them to bring in their mom and dad and maybe a few friends and that they stick, cool. But if they don't, they retain that business while that kid goes job hopping 20 times where, you know, if people would actually invest in these kids to teach them how to actually do this, how to actually like the person in the mirror yep. so they don't care about all the rejection and everything, you know, the kid would build some amazing careers for themselves. But Let, Let's change the gears here a little bit from the sales part to the business part because you run, what, what was it, three businesses? Three companies, yeah. And one of the things that, if I'm not mistaken, has made your businesses successful and something I've always told other businesses they need to do is the podcast. Yep, for sure. Well, podcasting saved my business, if I were completely honest. Okay. So my first year in business, so my, my last career 
was with an organization called Sandler Training. Oh, uh, so, yes. So I went from, you know, at that point, 13 years of straight commission sales, never been sales trained in my entire life up to then, to going and selling sales training. Wow. <laughs> right? They, they recruited me in, and I said, I don't want to be a sales trainer. I'm a sales guy. I just sell. And they're like, right. cool, we don't need trainers. We need sales guys. So, and then all of a sudden, two years in, they look at me and they say, I can't make any more money. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm a sales guy. I go sell more. And they're like, that's the problem. We don't have capacity. Huh? I can't train any more people unless you decide you want to become a trainer. Wow. And I went, I didn't sign up to be a trainer. And they're like, but that's the deal. So if I wanted to make more money, I now had to learn how to train people. And you want to talk about a tough transition to go from sales guy. I'd never been a sales manager, executive, anything. And right. now I've got to go teach multi-million dollar companies how to actually sell. That was a massive mind shift because now I couldn't make money. I couldn't do anything unless I sold it and trained it. Wow. So it was a massive transition. So... I did that for almost seven years, picked up partners, supposedly came one of the top sales trainers in the country, and then turned 40 and found out that I could, you know, become an entrepreneur and do my own thing. I mean, I was mm -hmm. blue collar. I didn't know you could be your own entrepreneur and start your own business. Really? So I, yeah, I had no clue. I mean, dad drove trucks growing up. Mom worked in factories. Dad retired from Xerox as a technician on copiers. Mom retired as a receptionist. There's no business owners anywhere in any generations of my family. Yeah. Right. So you went, you got a job, but turned 40 and I started hearing guys like Gary Vee and Tim Ferriss and, you know, all these people talking about you be this entrepreneur, mm -hmm. read the book. Um, you're a badass at making money with Jen Sincero. And, you know, there's a lot of things that came together to say, dude, you can do this on your own. And then during a dinner, I picked up business partner in that in that franchise firm for Sandler. Um, during a dinner, my business partner looked at me and said, dude, thank God you're my retirement plan. And he said it out of love. He really did. And I, right. as soon as he said it, I was, I was really proud to have worked with him and helped build such a large company. But after that dinner, I sat in my truck. I'm like, dude, what the hell are you doing? You're living yeah. somebody else's retirement plan. So 15 days later from that moment, I launched my business. <laughs> Within 24 hours, Sandler Corporate set two corporate attorneys to my farm to serve my non-compete papers. Get out of here. Um, I didn't remember signing them, but I had such a large book of business. It wasn't my former business partner that was sent them. It was Sandler corporate because they were afraid I was going to come back and go after all the business. Wow. So I tried to fight it with my own attorneys, but my attorneys are like, look, dude, they're going to bury you in, in so much Court cash costs. and so much paperwork. They're like, by the time you're done, you're going to probably be out about a half a million. And, you know, you beat it after the non-competes up. Right. So for my first year running my own business, I was under a non-compete. I couldn't talk about sales, business development, sales training anywhere in the world. Jeez. So I started off as a success coach. And to this day, I have no clue what a success coach is. <laughs> I was about to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously some sort of business whore that just says yes a lot, right? Um, can you? Absolutely. Whatever it is, I can do that. Um, so I spent that first year throwing a lot of money at business and, you know, can you hear the puppy barking at all? Oh yeah. What actually, what kind of puppy is it? Uh, it's a white German shepherd. Oh, sweet. So, uh, I've got, uh, she's a puppy and then I've got a, her brother. So she's probably 35, 40 pounds. And then her brother wow. is 105 pounds. Wow. At 11 months. At 11 months old? 11 months. He's a freak. So they're house. full bred German Shepherds. Uh, yeah. So I got a full bred white one, then I got a full bred uh, German with this almost solid black one. Oh, sweet. So. Um, look, look, she knows we're talking about her. She stopped. Yeah, I was hoping she stays that way. <laughs> so sorry about the dog barking. But, That's all right, man. Uh, it's real life. Um, yep, exactly. I have a full working farm, so it's either that or goats going. So, um, <laughs> But, you know, so th this first year, I'm throwing hundreds of thousands of dollars at coaches and consultants and courses, trying to figure out how to build a business. And then all of a sudden I look up and six months in, I stood on the back porch of my farm and looked at my wife and said, babe, we're going to lose everything we own. Wow. You know, the mortgage was three months behind, you know, her Jeep got repossessed. She had to go in on that Monday morning and literally cash in her 401k 
to save oh. the farm. Wow. So, uh, and she looked at me and she's like, dude, get off your ass and go sell something. And for me, it was a, it was a crazy moment because I realized, you know, in all the businesses that I was a part of and all the things I did, I really never saw the business side of it. I never saw the CEOs right. of the bigger companies that I worked for. You know, um, even working with Jerry doing the HVAC, I never saw the business side of it. You know, working for Cardinal Health and Medicine Shop, I never saw the business side of it. I never talked to the CEO. Selling commercial printing, I never saw the CEO. I mean, the only time I saw these CEOs and stuff, or even when I was doing Sandler, I never saw the business side of it. Um, only time I ever really talked about business is when I brought in these multi-million dollar contracts or we were losing a multi-million dollar client or something. So... I had no idea what a CEO or a business owner actually did. Right. So I spent most of my time behind the scenes learning things and trying to build things. You know, as I was trying to figure out how to build this business, I realized I didn't know what I was doing. But I, the one thing I wasn't doing was the one thing I'm actually good at, which was outselling. Right. So here I am freaking doing operational like things. Right. But I wasn't selling. So I started to go full sales mode and I still didn't know what I sold really because I was under this non-compete I couldn't talk about sales but I really started getting after it well a buddy of mine threw me a bone and he had a event coming up where well, there's gonna be about 400 people in the audience and he goes look I know you're struggling why don't you come tell your story on my stage and I'm like dude I can't really talk about sales. He goes, I know. But you can tell your story and how you got here. Right. I'm like, I can do that. So I go on that stage and I have a blast, man. And I'm telling my story, going high energy, running all over the place, acting like a damn fool. <laughs> and after I walk off, and that's not really my personality, but I was like, dude, I've got to give it everything I got. You get right into there. it, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I walk off stage and this guy walks up to me. And he's like, dude, I love your energy. I love your story. Would you come tell it on my podcast? And I'm like, what's a podcast? What? Wait a minute. How long ago was it? <laughs> April of 2018. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm like, I have no idea what a podcast is. Right. And he goes, it's like news talk radio. I'm like, oh, I can do that. So I go to his studio out in Dallas. And we sit down and record, have a great time. I think we talked for about 90 minutes. It was just a lot of fun. And then the show airs two days later, and this company reaches out to me and says, hey, we'd like to hire you to come do sales training for our company. Nice. And I promise you, I did not do sales training with that company. <laughs> um, I did motivational and educational training <laughs> with this company. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I made sure that they were really inspired. <laughs> and, um, but I realized that I could go on podcasts, be a guest and actually generate business. Right. So I started reaching out to every podcast I could using every sales tactic I knew. And I got on a bunch of podcasts and I happened to go on one that was just really bad. This host was horrible. Um, ask dumb questions. I mean, at one point I took over a show to try and ask him to tell a story because he was so dry. It was really, really bad. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's horrible, dude. And uh, I'm like, dude, if this guy has any success, I'm going to launch a show. So I went to YouTube University. Wait a minute, what? YouTube University. That's a thing? No, it just means I went and watched a shit ton of YouTube videos. Oh, okay. Podcasts. <laughs> 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 and, <I'm... laughs> um, dude, I have a master's degree at this point and a doctorate in YouTube videos, all right? <laughs> Um, but I, I, I go to YouTube and I learn how to start a podcast. And so I have a laptop, a gaming headset and zoom okay. and I launch my show. It takes the fuck off. And five months later, it's number 22 in the world. Really? And I'm sitting next to Gary V, Tim Ferriss, you know, Tony Robbins, all these guys. And, you know, a lot, about three months in, some of these big names started reaching out, like Neil Patel and Shailene Johnson and Mike Michalowicz were asking to be on the freaking show. And I'm like, wow. Oh, shit. And during, it was during that process that I, that I realized that I can't have this crap show of a process. I got to look like I know what I'm doing. Right. And so I started learning how to put systems in place. I started learning how to hire. I learned how to do process. And 
you know, I really started figuring out what it meant to build a business because I was learning the functions of a business while podcasting. Well, now flash forward to September of 2018. That's why I say podcasting saved my business is it yeah. taught me business. And then September of 2018, my not compete comes up. So now I've got all this momentum from podcasting, traveling all over the U.S., even to Ireland to speak on podcasting at this point. To Ireland? Mm -hmm. My wife and I got flown out to Ireland to speak there. And uh, now I could talk about freaking sales and business development. That's how I got myself to hear was podcasting gave me the momentum. um, And then I could be me and talk about what I want. Let's take a little break here. I want to talk about one of my sponsors, Marilyn Pickers. Maryland Pickers is a local junk removal service, and they also have dumpster rentals as well. I actually called Jeremy when we were doing our spring cleaning this year, and he brought the dumpster out and quick to answer the phone. Came out the day he said he was going to pick it up, answered all my questions. Everything was fine. Phenomenal. Very professional to work with. So if you're looking for junk removal service, if you're looking to rent a dumpster, Contact Maryland Pickers. Go to MarylandPickers.com or give them a call at 443-206-1859. Again, that's 443-206-1859. Tell them that Rich from Harford County Living sent you. The, the craziest thing happened is I still didn't know how to run a business very well, so I started a Facebook group in, because I wanted to be around entrepreneurs. I had none in my yeah. family. So Smart I started thinking. A, Facebook group to get around by other business owners thinking they would be able to give me advice. Mm -hmm. But as I was sharing what I was screwing up, people started asking me questions. I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm asking you guys questions. Don't ask. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. (laughs) You know? Um, And that became the foundations for a lot of our businesses and what are doing was me sharing my screw ups, me sharing my failures and them asking questions and working through it. And that's how we built, you know, the champions table masterminds. That's how the badass business summit came about. And then one of the key things that led to us launching Success Champion Networking. Well, you know, you got to fail to succeed. I think you've got to screw up or better way of looking at it because people always get hung up on failure. I think you've got to go try new things, take risk and explore. Oh, absolutely. Knowing things are going to break, being okay with the breaking, knowing that this is where you're learning. Yeah. Yeah. Because an entrepreneur, man, is the guy who wakes up every morning knowing he's going to get punched in the face, smiles, and goes, let go. At some point, that entrepreneur learns to duck. Then they get hit with the uppercut, right? Right. But, but and eventually, you'll learn to duck the uppercut, and then you get hit with the hook. You know, but it's every day knowing something's going to break, and it's going at it from, I'm not failing. I'm freaking learning through this. And that's that's the real power. And most people don't want to actually learn. Yeah. They're looking for the easy way. Do you think your time in the Marine Corps, especially with the discipline, helped out with that too? Everybody always asks me that. And my answer is going to be no. And really? here's why. Here's why. Okay. I had great parents. Mm-hmm. Blue, wow. blue proud collar parents that raised me very, 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 very well. The Marine Corps taught me to cuss better. The Marine Corps <laughs> taught me to fist a cuff a little bit better. Uh, Marine Corps taught me to drink really well. Um, yeah, that's all true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and truthfully, I would say the Marine Corps taught me the power of having the right people around you. Yeah. You know, because yeah. there's still guys I'm friends with. Not a lot of them, but, you know, there's still guys I'm, I'm, I'm friends with. But the Marine Corps also told me, taught me what I didn't want to do with my life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, four years was plenty. And I don't regret, and I don't want people to think that I regret my time in the Marine Corps, because I don't by any stretch of the imagination. If I live life over again, I'd do it the same way. Yeah, I would have started a business in my freaking 20s versus wait until I was 40. But, you know, um, but the the Marine Corps was a good moment in time, but it was a moment in time. So uh, one of the things, and when I was looking at your profile, because you know, we hooked up through, what was it, Podmatch, I believe yeah, it was. Yeah. <clears throat> and one of the questions you had on there, which... Now, hearing your story, I have to ask it. How in the world do you run a farm and the businesses? <laughs> because, I mean, just the dogs, the puppy was keeping you busy. You're right? talking about you have goats and everything. How do you do it, man? Um, so my days start between 4 and 4.20. Okay. And I'm out uh, every morning. 
you know, and my me, I take the puppies and we go walk the farm for an hour because that's my my time to get any sort of exercise in and my time to work on my mental game. So I'm listening to cool podcast, mm-hmm. you know, and trying to up in my learning, and I really invest my learning time there. Um, and I have a notes app on my phone where I'm taking jotting down notes as I'm walking, right? Um, and then you know, I start waking up the farm at about five twenty. And it takes me about an hour to wake up the farm, get wake all the animals. farm. Well, you got to go feed the animals. You got to oh, okay. take out the water. Trust me, the roosters will let me know. It's freaking. I was going to say, I figured the animals yeah. be waking and, your and, ass up. And <laughs> I should take a camera out there one day and let everybody listen to the goats bitch at me because if I'm five minutes late, the whole freaking valley knows, right? <laughs> um, and I got 400 pounds of Great Pyrenees dogs that go running with them and. You know, they have wow. very, very dis- two, yeah, two Great Pyrenees that are over 400 pounds combined. Holy cow. Uh, my my male ghost, he's about 215. Uh, my my Luna's sitting right at about 200. Uh, Good lord. To... And I bet they think they're lap dogs, don't they? Oh, they are the sweetest thing. But they have barks. Yeah. They have this one bark. Now, if ghost locks down and barks... I'm grabbing every arsenal close to me and beelining out the door because that means something is too close to the property. Wow. And he will clear a six-foot fence without even break, breaking a sweat to make sure it's removed. Holy cow. So I got to get out there quick. Um, so light sweeper on a farm. <laughs> but, yeah, so I wake them up by 520. My wife's out the door by 630. Um, and that, so uh, that... 520 to 620 taking care of the farm i'll come in i do all my social media posts and people watch about six o'clock every morning my social media stuff comes out and then by seven o'clock my ass sits here till about six in the afternoon and i'm back to back all day long right because i want to when the day's done to sit down and enjoy it with my wife all right like so that. we got a deal that by eight o'clock business is done I'm allowed to respond on some social media stuff or, you know, inquiries, mm-hmm. but no, no networking things or anything else. Business is done. We're watching TV. We're in bed by 10. And then on the weekends, you know, she sleeps in a little bit. I do all the work, you know, till about nine, maybe nine thirty, And then right. I'm done. It's all farm time. So, wow. Um, and I should say every Thursday around noon or one, I shut down all the companies. And we go work on the farm together because she's got a, a half day as well. So you have a good time management program in place. Um, it's a forced program that we had to learn. Right. Okay. You know, but I also had the luxury of building all these businesses sitting in this chair. I don't have to drive into town. I don't have commutes. Yeah. You know, I don't do hardly any traveling unless I'm doing a speaking engagement somewhere. You know, but even I'm doing speaking engagements except for the car rides – you know, because I don't want to talk on Zoom during the rides. You know, I'm, I'm, wherever I am, I, all of my businesses are designed to work as long as I have internet connection. It sounds like you're having fun doing it too, which is oh, very blast. important. Absolutely blast. Um, I, I didn't know working for other people that this was the lifestyle I was looking for. Right. You know, because, you know, working for other people, I was good. I could sell, you know, I was always one of the top producers. And yeah. And, you know, we built a great life for ourselves. And so I didn't know that there was anything outside of that until I discovered. And I can tell you, I thought I worked hard when I worked for other people. I was a lazy bastard working for other people. And I was still one of the top producers. Running my own company, (laughs) I can tell you I was lazy as hell. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize that when you run your own business, you're going to work harder. And you have to have the discipline, and especially if you work from home, you have to have the discipline. The set now, you're on a. I'm, I take it you're on a big farm, good size one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're lucky. You you don't have neighbors close by. No. <laughs> whereas whereas with me, I mean, if people were to see see me walking in the mornings, there's times I'm in nothing but boxer briefs and boots walking the dogs. <laughs> it's pure dark, and I'm like, ain't right. nobody gonna see me. <laughs> But you don't have anybody knocking on your door interrupting you either. No. Yeah, no, and, and that's no. the one thing. Sometimes I just want to put a sign out there. Don't knock. Nobody's here. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> so the Success Champion Network, mm-hmm. because when I saw that, and, and I'm I'm big with you know my local chamber here, and I saw that you have three chapters in Maryland. 
Not mm-hmm. close to me though. But explain the success. Blah, success the, not the sex that, champion. Not yeah, the sex champion. Not the, That's not a the sex whole champion different network. thing. <laughs> <laughs> explain the success champion network. Because from what I've seen in some of the videos I watch, this looks like something that every area needs to have. Yeah. So uh, I never wanted to have networking as part of my business. Mm-hmm. So let me explain. I, you know, and I did commercial printing, I found networking. And at one point, I was running 11 networking groups for the Fort Worth Chamber of Commerce. And um, wow. because I tried all the other networking and they just couldn't get me to the caliber of clientele that I needed to get to. You know, right. Uh, nothing against any organization like the BNIs and all that. They were just playing too small. Yeah. And so I found the chamber that worked for a while. But when I got to Sandler training, even the chamber struggled to get me into these bigger companies that I needed to get into. And I was still mm-hmm. doing traditional selling as well. So I launched a whole bunch of my groups. So at one point, I'm running 11 chambers of commerce groups and six of my own. God. So all at one go. And um, I'm, I get after it. So yeah. I mean, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. And so... But when I launched my company, I had no desire to do networking because anybody who teaches networking is just a broke asshole that can't sell. Right. Right. And I'm just not going to be associated with that because I've sold millions upon millions of dollars in my time. And so I part of the reason I struggled those early years is I could have done networking, but I did not. I wasn't going to do it. I mean, I wasn't going to be associated with that. And I had a lot of people actually suggesting that I should do networking, and Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do it. In April of 20, I'd rented out a convention center here in Fort Worth, and we were doing the first Badass Business Summit. And I had 23 speakers flying in from around the world, and we sold out the event. And two weeks from the event starting, the city of Hearst says, if anybody shows up to our event, we're going to arrest everybody on site. What? COVID. Oh... So wow. I love saying it that way because everybody has that reaction. Um, so now here I am paid out tens of thousands of dollars to do this event and I can't do it. Outside of that as business summit, the rest of my companies were online. So I looked at the team and said, guys, we're going to be good. We're online, but the entire world's moving online. And I looked at him. I said, guys, you know, it's taken us two and a half years to build this online business. These guys don't have two and a half years. They have 30 days. Right. To figure this out. So that night, I woke up 3.30 in the morning, realizing that I was going to launch networking groups. I sent a message off to my COO and said, what do you think about this? And he's like, I think it's going to be a good idea. Um, and in the back of my head, I'm like, dude, I really don't want to launch these networking groups. I said, I got to because I have to help, but I do not want to do this. And that morning, I'm talking to my wife over a cup of coffee before she takes off. And I said, babe, I don't want to do this. She's like, why not? I'm like, because I can sell. I don't want people to think that because I do networking, I can't sell. Mm-hmm. And I, it was really hitting my ego. And she goes, you're a freaking idiot. I'm like, how am I an idiot? Wow. She goes, why don't you fix what everybody hates about networking and change how the world networks? Ah. And I went, son of a bitch. Seven days later, we launched our first chapter. And it's since grown. We're up to 55 chapters across the U.S., three in Canada, and we're opening up six other countries right now. So we're being told we're the fastest growing networking organization, growing networking organization right. on the planet. So what we did is we took out what people hate about networking. So there's no multi-level marketing, no network marketing people, direct marketing people allowed in our networks. Um, oh, I like that. Right? So we said that's a no-go. And nothing against those people. There's some great people that do it. But to make that style of business work, you've got to go sell people. Exactly. Right? And our groups are not designed. I mean, the people in our groups are not your damn prospect list. Right. Um, you know, we don't focus on referrals. And this really surprises people, a lot of people. A referral leads to one transaction. And mm-hmm. very rarely am I going to get into a conversation with your end user. Right, the exact person that needs to use your product or service. So for us, we focus on introductions. So for me, I want to know specifically who's already got the client base that if you were to meet them, you two could have some hellacious synergistic partnership and do a lot of business back and forth. Right. If I can make that introduction, that's 
thousands of referrals and deals and business, and that's lifetime value for each other versus let's get this one transactional referral done. So we flip the script on networking as a whole and say, screw referrals. I mean, if they happen, cool, but let's get people introduced to the right people. And I'm telling you, that changed. It's like partnerships. Oh, 100%. And when you get these people into the right dynamic conversations, I mean, things explode. And then we said, okay, we're going to do it only virtually. I have a farm. I don't want to drive into town. Right. I said, but there's no networking meetings that are designed to be virtual. So we said, we have to make these fun, you know, high energy. So all of our presidents are extremely high energy people, not you're over the top Richard Simmons like, but they're they're high caliber people. <laughs> uh, can you imagine Richard Simmons running a Zoom meeting? <laughs> For you young people, right. <laughs> for everybody that that doesn't know who Richard Simmons is, just know that he's a big bodybuilder, very soft spoken. Just Google him. <laughs> yeah. Did you, ever but, see, did you see him when he was on what's uh, whose line is it anyway? Yes. Oh my yes. God. I'm sorry. I just when you said that, it's the right? first thing that right. popped into my head. God. So, um, you know, in, in addition to those changes. We said, so a traditional kind of networking meeting is you spend 35, 45 minutes doing these stupid 60 second commercials. A lot of people put dumb jingles on the end Mm -hmm. and most networking is taught by broke people. So, so they're teaching that networking is the main function of your business. So every way they're taught how to do things and talk about things is talking like they're trying to sell their services to the group and that's how they position themselves. Right. And that's how those 60 second commercials go. Giving that elevator pitch. Yep. Yep, and then some idiot gets up and does a presentation that nobody gives a shit about because they're talking about their company history and the gray mm-hmm. old white dude that started it back in the 1900s. And then they fabricate a whole bunch of these supposed referrals that are not really referrals. Yeah. So we said, we're going to change that entire meeting style. So we run four different styles of meetings. And they're all centered around education. So we run one as a mastermind, one as virtual coffees where you go one-on-one and you work on introductions for each other. We do one where a member gets up and trains something, trains something that we can all apply in our business. So it's not, like not give us your company history, teach us something. Right. And then we have an approved list of speakers that are some of the best speakers in the world that go and virtually train in all of our different groups. And it, what we also said is, yeah, we're, we're industry specific by chapter, but we don't believe in competition. You know, my brother's a handyman, and I don't give a shit how many handymen join the network. Blood thicker Thank than anything. You. You know, my brother's getting the damn work, and just because you're in my work doesn't mean you get freaking business from me, right? Thank you. So, with that said, being a member of one of our chapters, you can go visit every other chapter we have across the world. Go attend their meeting. We also have a private online community where you can DM, interact, put out content, promote all your events and workshops and anything you have coming up because it's all private to members of SEN. Right. Um, you know, in addition to that, every Thursday at uh, 10 o'clock central, I go live and I teach sales, business development, business growth, social selling, you know, all the things that I've learned over the years. Every chapter from around the world comes to that training. So I'll teach for 30 minutes and then we do breakout groups where you go getting put in different networking groups, meeting people from all over the world and you're learning, educating. We come back, do lessons learned. And we are just focused more on the success of your business and teaching you how to be successful in business. We just happen to have networking groups attached to it. Right. I so, love that. Um, and in doing this, man, we continue to blow up. Because we really changed the game to how people network. And I can tell you, people self-qualify instantly. Because if yeah. they come up and they're they're from the old school mentality of let me pitch everybody, you know, they won't last two seconds. You know, I mean, every member's voted in. You can't, we, we, we're not. Really? Yeah. We're not looking for a heartbeats, man. So, so yeah. there, there's organizations out you're there. Not, that are, you're not a bean counter. Nope. And so people, you know, we've got other businesses. You know, yeah. so this isn't just our sole bread and butter. So, so I don't care how many members join. I'm more focused on let's get the right badasses that actually want to do business together and cool things happen. Right. So what we, we find is bringing in these higher caliber people. Our chapters grow a little bit slower, but we also capped every chapter at 30 members. You know, chapter gets bigger than that because then you start getting, you know, all these clicks and, you know, dumb things happening. Mm-hmm. We're, we're laser focused on... 
how can I grow your business, right? And everybody in the chapter is not going, hey, guys, you got to get me a referral this week. We're going, how the hell can I get you introduced to the right person? Yeah, I like that. I mean, that. you got everybody opening doors because there's no pressure of, oh, my God, this is going to be a sale. And when, when that referral just comes with so much weight. Yeah. You know, and those introductions, you know, it's like, Bob, go meet Tom, dude. I think you guys are going to have a cool synergy. And people are like, hell yeah, let's jump on a Zoom and let's go. I love that because I one of the one of my pet peeves about networking, and that's one of the things I stopped doing was the networking groups. I didn't like the fact that if you're, let's say, uh, an insurance salesperson, you're the only insurance company allowed in that network. Yeah, I I, I didn't. To me, the whole idea was creating partnerships, helping each other out. Well, even Helping worse. Helping businesses out. For sure. That's what I even say. worse, there's some organizations that are like, dude, if you're a part of my organization, you can't go network anywhere. I'm like, how yeah, the hell are you telling anybody how to run their own business? Exactly. Dude, I want you plugged in. I want you part of the chamber. I want, I don't give a shit if you're part of BNI or La Tip or any of the other organizations out yeah. there. Go. You know, because if you're not plugged in, you're not meeting new people, you're not bringing value back to your, your SEN chapter. Yeah. You know? And so, so uh, the whole idea is for everybody to be successful. That's it. That's and it. I mean, you're doing that. You thank your wife, <laughs> <laughs> right? I actually am writing the book and the title is called the shit. My wife said that changed my life. <laughs> and well, maybe but, I need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why is she's truly my North star. I mean, uh, she's, she's my conscious a lot of times. And if I'm having a struggle business conversation, that may be like an ethical thing or whatever else. I instantly go, babe, what do you think about this? What would you do? Right. Because she's that. very black and white, man. I mean, there's no no gray area on thought because she's one of the most compassionate, genuine, rule-following people in the world. So how do – now, actually, so with SCN, are solopreneurs allowed in? For, of course. Okay. We are primarily micro-business. Okay. So, so most of our companies are going to be doing less than half a million dollars a year. Okay. And how does somebody, if, if somebody wants to join or visit, how do so, they go about so doing that? So anybody in the world, as long as they're not multi-level marketing, mm -hmm. can go to successchampionnetworking.com, find the chapter. If there's not a chapter in their area, send me a message. There's a button on there that says, I'd like to start a chapter. Right. I'm interested. Send me a message. But if you go to successchampion.com, you can go find a chapter, and then you can fill out a form and select the chapter you want to and go visit Okay. And it's all virtual, so right. um, go go visit a chapter in the area. Where now, are you at in Maryland? I'm in I'm northeast of Baltimore. Actually, Aberdeen Proving Grounds in my back door. Okay. So yeah, I'm right there on the Chesapeake Bay. Watch this, guys. So <laughs> why don't we grab a follow up Zoom and talk about what it would look like to launch in a chapter in your area? Because here's the other thing. I'm up for that. Uh, my presidents. Don't pay a dime to start a chapter. Really? Members only pay $47 a month, and it's month to month. Now, can they do annually? No, we, we don't do the annual option. Okay. We may eventually uh, put that in there. Um, right. But the reason we don't do the annual is because it typically leads to cancer. Because somebody gets in, yeah. and they all of a sudden decide this is no longer a fit for them. They're like, shit, well, I paid for it, so I might as well show up. They right. become Eeyore and brings everybody else down. Ah, good point. Good point. I like that. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely up for that because I, with a lot of the different businesses I talk to around here, and a lot of them don't like the regular networking, Yep. I know they would be up for it. And, and yep. it's, that's one of the things that I always push is partnering. I don't yep. believe in... I don't have competitors. They're partners. Because yep. with my thing, like with my DJ business, if I can't DJ an event, then I'm going to recommend another DJ that can. For sure. Why wouldn't I? I because mean, you already look, look like Santa America. Claus off a of miracle on 34th Street, so you might as well, you know, go with the whole damn thing. <laughs> well, I didn't go to University of Santa Claus, though. <laughs> Which, believe it or not, it's like a real you, thing. Uh, right. Unlike YouTube University, it is a real <laughs> thing. So. Your books, you have what? Is it five or four five. books? Five. five books written. 
Go ahead and tell everybody the name, because I know we're almost yeah. running out of time. Tell everybody the names of the books and how they can find well, them. I'll do this. I tell you, if there's two books of mine that I highly recommend you go read, go okay. get. Um, the first one is called Endless Stream Referrals. And it's at, literally about taking your business and getting a crap ton of referrals coming into it. Okay. And I know okay. I talked about introductions a lot, but this mm -hmm. is about you personally getting a lot of referrals for your business. Okay. Um, it's a quick read, 34 pages, get it on Amazon, endless stream of referrals. The second book is if you're building a business and you're trying to finally get to business freedom is go get fucked to focus. And that's really the name right fuck to focus. Um, go get it on Amazon. It's three ninety nine. And I'll give your listeners a absolute thing. If anybody goes and buys 10 of the fuck to focus books, and emails me a receipt or goes to LinkedIn and connects with me and emails me, gets me an image of a receipt of 10 books, which costs $40. I'll give anybody in the world an hour of my time. Really? To sit down and work on their business if they go buy 10 books. And I'll be honest, the reason I do that That's a steal. is because it gets my, keeps my book top of Amazon. So you're ah, doing me a okay. favor and then you're going to give that book out to nine other people. So it helps me continue to push the brand out there. All right. So with you doing podcast, are any of the books also in audiobook form? Yeah, absolutely. Fuck to oh, Focus man. and and the Stream of Furls are both in Audible. Actually, uh, uh, How to Be a Success Champion is in Audible as well. Sweet. Now I know what I got to <laughs> do after I'm done here and wait for the email for the Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, you yeah. have anything to add man? besides yeah, do your website? Yeah, so so you can find everything at DonnieBovine.com. But I, I'll tell you, the biggest thing you guys can do for me that's absolutely amazing is tell everybody about this show. Having my own podcast, I can tell you the toughest thing in the world is growing your audience. So do Rich the biggest favor and tell one person about this show do you think would benefit from this type of conversation, content, and quality. It'll mean the absolute world for him. And I tell you, people, when you listen to Donnie's show, especially business owners, Oh my God. Well, not just business owners, anybody that, you know, is looking to, I don't want to say just better their business or, or, uh, you know, their line of work, but even themselves me mentally, it, it, that's a show to listen to. It's definitely going to help you. Thanks out. brother. And so, that's growth mode out there. Anywhere you listen to podcasts. Right. And I'll have links for everything in the show notes for that. And Donnie, Thanks a lot. Anytime you want to come back on, the door is open. And Semper Fi, brother. You're right, brother. I appreciate you, man. I want to thank Donnie for coming on this episode. And if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, whatever, you need to check him out. And, of course, I'm recommending his podcast, the Growth Mode Podcast. And while you're at it, go ahead and check out Success Champion Networking. I'll have the links to all of that in the show notes. So make sure you check it out. Again, listen to the podcast. I guarantee you're going to love that one. I listen to it all the time. Great podcast. And of course, make sure you pick up his books, all five of them, if you can. I'll have the links for that as well in the show notes. If you would like to be a guest on the podcast, or if you would like to recommend somebody for me to get on the podcast, or if there's a topic you want me to talk about, just go to conversationswithrichbennett.com. Click the Be a Guest link and fill out the form, and I'll get in contact with you, and we'll get everything set up. And while you're there, please subscribe to the podcast as well as the newsletter. And check out all my sponsors and, of course, my co-hosts. Please show your support for all of them as well. Until next time, my name is Rich Bennett. Stay safe, and thank you for joining the conversation. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Hartford, and Cecil Counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. 
It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's best roofing contractor and best home improvement contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Heel Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Heel Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Heel Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time. 